So as we get ever better at our biomechanics, it's kind of interesting to start to address some slightly more complex kind of considerations, although this in essence is quite simple. I'm gonna draw for you to begin with, and I encourage you to do the same thing. I here have got some kind of passageway, and this passageway gets narrower, it goes on for a little bit, and then it opens up. And you might be thinking, what is this guy doing? What is he drawing? Okay, so I've, I've drawn, just imagine that's some kind of passageway, and imagine that over here, We've got some kind of we've got some kind of fan. There's my fan. It's on legs. It's on legs like this. There's my fan, and this fan is blowing air in this direction. Okay, so we've got air going in this direction. So the other thing we're going to do with what's going to eventually become my venturi meter. That's actually what I'm drawing, just in case you're wondering. And there's lots of different types of them. But what I'm also going to do is I'm going to put a little sensor here which is there to sense air pressure. I'm gonna put a little sensor here, this to sense air pressure. I'm gonna put a little sensor here. All of these little kind of things like these, these are uh, these are, bar um, these are uh, barometers, okay? So these are barometers and they sense air pressure. Now, here's my question to you. If you accept from me that as this air whizzes through here, it's going like this, as you can see from the movement of that fan, and then of course, eventually it goes through here and then eventually it comes out here, I'd like you to accept for me that when it comes through this part of the venturi, venturi meter, the air has to travel faster, okay? Are you happy to accept that because it's squeezing through a narrow space? So I'm gonna ask you to accept that. If you don't accept it, then you're gonna have to eventually because it's a fact. Um, and my question is, if that air moves faster in this portion here, what do you think we would find as the reading of this barometer compared to this one and this one. My actual question is, if air is moving fast, what does that equal for pressure, for air pressure? Is air pressure high or is it low? So what do you think? Maybe pause the video, think about it, discuss it with someone next to you, whatever, whatever. But I'm gonna tell you now that if we've got fast moving air, effectively, we have low pressure air. Also, if we've got slower air, for example, we've got that here, what we've got there is we have got higher pressure air. Now, this, in essence, is the important realization when it comes to Bernoulli, and that is that if air is moving slower, it's at high pressure. If air is moving faster, it's at lower pressure. That's the big takeaway I want you to grasp from here. Now, with that in mind, and I'm gonna do this all hand-drawn in this particular case, I want to introduce you to a javelin. So here's a javelin. Imagine my ja javelin's traveling, th that's not the javelin, by the way, that's the direction of movement, but imagine my javelin is this blue object here, sort of aqua object, there it is, and imagine it's sort of flying through the air in that way that I've got pictured there, okay? So it's flying in that direction, it's being propelled, I mean, my, it's hot, it's, ugly as anything my javelin obviously but it's flying in that way now this could be a javelin it could be a ski jumper it could be a discus this could even be a discus if you think about how the discus passes through the air but here's the important point i want to make as this javelin travels through the air forward you've got the direction of uh, movement there we have got a whole series of air that this javelin is hitting so as this javelin moves in that direction an air particle which has been struck here needs to go up around and then off the back of the javelin like this, okay? So if we then do another one of these, so I'm gonna put this one in here, it goes here, it goes here, it goes here. So we've got airflow around the top of the javelin. I'll put another one here. You get the sort of idea. These air molecules have to move this way. Now it's worth reminding you here that yes, we're sort of showing that the air is moving, but in reality here, it's the actual javelin that's moving past the air. So of course the air has to find its way to this back point at the same point because the, because the javelin is moving at a standard uh, velocity. Now what about an air molecule that's hitting the javelin here? This air molecule simply has to go here and it finishes there, right? Would you agree? What about an air molecule that's here? This air molecule literally has to go here and it's there. This air molecule here has to go here, and it's off the back already. Now, obviously, I'm doing some fairly dodgy drawing here, but the point I want to make to you is that above the javelin, if we consider this here to be above the javelin, and we consider this down here to be below the javelin, what can we say about these about these two different areas? Well, first of all, 
I'm going to I'm going to describe the angle of this javelin. This javelin has been thrown with with what we call an angle of attack. Now, if you want a definition of an angle of attack, it's actually quite specific. But the angle of the attack actually is that this creates what we call an aerofoil. Now, an aerofoil is an object where the air traveling over the top of it has to go further than the air traveling underneath. So think that through here. The air going over the top has to go further than the air below. Agreed. So what does that mean for the air above? It has to travel further. That means that the air below, let me make sure I've got the right red color, has to go less distance. That means that the air above has to travel faster. Now you should be getting the realization of what's about to happen here. That means that the air below doesn't have to travel so fast. In fact, it travels more. It travels slower. Now, again, can I reiterate a point here? This is because it's the javelin that's moving and effectively displacing this air. So, of course, all the air has to arrive at this back point at the same time because the javelin is moving at a set rate. Now, if the air is moving faster at the top, what do we know from the Bernoulli principle from earlier on? We know that fast moving air equals lower pressure. So we now have got lower pressure air above the javelin. So we've got lower pressure up here and we have got higher pressure down here. Now, we can also stress that we now have what's called a pressure differential. A pressure differential. A pressure differential. So we've got higher pressure below compared to above. So what does that mean? It means that this javelin from its center of mass is going to experience a Bernoulli lift force. A Bernoulli lift force. So what is the impact of this lift force? Does it actually lift it up and make it float away? No. For the total of the net forces acting, it simply means that the weight has less effect. Now what that then does is it extends, it extends the horizontal dif distance traveled. In other words, the javelin travels further. We could also say that it makes the flight path asymmetrical, or we could say non-parabolic, by extending that fl flight path. Rather than the flight path being like an arc, which would be like this, the flight path would be more like this. Okay, we'll extend that flight path in this way. So that that lift force is incredibly useful for extending that flight and increasing the horizontal displacement or distance traveled. Now, can I stress to you, this angle of attack point is really, really important. The angle of, the, of attack is to promote an aerofoil. I wanna remind you what an aerofoil is. An aerofoil is a shape where the air traveling over the top of an object needs to travel further than the air traveling underneath an object. Now we can, of course, do an inverted aerofoil, and we'll come back to that in another tutorial. But here, that's the case, I wanna introduce you to two other occasions where we get aerofoils in sport that we're interested in. One is when we release a discus. Now this is my, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start that again. Here's my terrible, here's my terrible, start again. Here's my terrible drawing of a discus flying through the air. There's my discus there. Imagine my discus is sort of going in that direction of motion and you can you can get on, you can get started with it. Look, the air going over has much further travel in the air going underneath, exactly the same principle. What if I was to get a ski jumper? There's my ski jumper's head, there's their body, there's their feet, maybe their arms are just behind them that way. What we're finding here is that the air is having to travel further over the ski jumper, then it, let me make their skis a bit longer, than it is for them traveling underneath the ski jumper. So can you see how exactly the same principles apply? Now, I'm not suggesting you should have anywhere near as shoddy a drawing I'm doing. I'm trying to draw and talk and so on at the same time. But the principle works. And the principle works simply because from our Venturi meter study where we started, fast moving air is at lower pressure, slow moving air is at higher pressure. Therefore, my little wonderful people, the air traveling over the javelin has to travel further, it has to go faster, therefore it's at lower pressure compared to that underneath. Therefore, we get a Bernoulli lift force. We extend the horizontal uh, distance traveled. We extend the flight. It's parabolic, asymmetrical, and the javelin travels further. And we manage to break, let's say, a world record. Cheers.